I had a quick question regarding side chains. So one of the topics that you covered in your whiteboard video was this idea that you can move information to another chain. So the destination chain. So a big controversy in the crypto community is this whole idea of hard forks. You know, Bitcoin has had quite a few hard forks and people are really scared of that word. You have um, you have a very eclectic group of individuals who feel like they have the correct answer and they decide to fork Bitcoin. There's there's countless examples um, moving in the future. People are scared that Cardano will fork in the future. What can side chains help with like non content, non contentious forks? And is this a is this a way for Cardano to implement protocol changes very quickly without just kind of compromising the network and splitting and creating multiple coins? Yes. So this is a difficult question. And actually, this is the um, the original idea for side chains when it was proposed by um, the Bitcoin developers. Um, they wrote a paper uh, about sidechains, which detailed what they wish that sidechains were uh, and, and what they um, hoped that sidechains could be without detailing a construction. And one of the rationales, one of the motivations there was to be able to create these upgrades without having a hard look. And um, I would say, in principle, yes, it's possible to do that. And the way that we would add a, a, a new feature to, let's say, Cardano, if it's a very controversial feature or a feature that is uh, breaking backwards compatibility in a big way, one of the possibilities that uh, you could approach this with is you could create a new blockchain from a new Genesis block in which you implement the new features and the new rules, um, which could be, for instance, a larger block size or a different smart contract language and so on. And then that blockchain would live on its own and you would allow it to interoperate with Cardano. And then when you write out the macroeconomic rules for that new blockchain, you would say that there is no native currency in that blockchain. The only way to put monetary value in that blockchain to create, to create native tokens in that chain is to move money from Cardano to it. So essentially what you're doing in that, in that manner is this, this new chain is not a new coin. It's just a new blockchain that a can carry Cardano, can, can carry ADA, uh, or can carry the rest of the tokens that could live in the Cardano ecosystem. Um, the and, and then because you allow the the chains to to interoperate and move move money from the legacy Cardano system to the new and upgraded system, um, then people can choose to move their money if they want to. Uh, so if you want, you can opt in for that change by moving your money to the new chain and use that new feature. Uh, but not everybody has to do it. And then if you want to go back at, at any moment, because, for example, you feel that security has been compromised um, or is at risk of being compromised, you can always move your money back and go back to the original uh, legacy code, which maybe has better guarantees. Um, and then if you want to interoperate with people that hold money in, in different chains, uh, all you have to do is move money to the appropriate chain make the transaction that you need and then perhaps even move it back. Um, so if you want to send money to a legacy, let's say Cardano account from um, an account that you hold in a, an experimental side chain, uh, what you would do is you would move that money back into the legacy Cardano blockchain and then into the uh, target account. On the other hand, if you hold legacy money in the legacy blockchain, you would um, use the sidechain mechanism to move it to the updated chain so that you can pay someone there. So that's the basic idea there. Uh, but there's many uh, open research questions about how we do this securely. And uh, the, central, the central question there that is open is if you have a sidechain which is very controversial and it's um, maybe unpopular and people don't want to use it, uh, if it's a sidechain that's based on proof of work, uh, it would have to use its own proof of work uh, mining network, and it could potentially be insecure uh, due to attacks by big miners that are working on a different network. Um, so, how to resolve that in proof of work is somewhat unclear. On the on the side on the proof of stake side, on on the other hand, uh, we do have mechanisms for resolving that, um, such as the mechanism we call uh, merged staking, where a sidechain can uh, in a sense, borrow the stake of the main chain 
to ensure that it's uh, still secure and uh, and adopt essentially adopt the honest majority that that sits on the main chain in terms of stake, uh, adopt it into the side chain without re necessarily requiring that stake to be moved. Um, so these are some very interesting questions. But the the gist is that yes, uh, in terms of large feature upgrades, this is a possibility. And then um, if the feature catches up and it seems that it has been tested and it's very popular, um, one way that things could work, and this is still a vision, and we don't have an implementation of that, but um, hopefully once enough people move their coins to the new chain and you have, let's say, a 90-95% adoption of that chain, then you could say that, okay, the main chain now, the legacy chain is now being sunset and we require everybody to move over to the new chain now that it has been tested and we know it's um, it has been proved to work uh, in a scalable manner or in a secure manner or whatever uh, whatever other worries people might may have had have been uh, confirmed not to uh, hold any truth in a uh, main net and not just the test net so it gives you some certain assurances um, that you would not have in the case of a hard fork that has been tested just on a test net